Hi, welcome to Southwest Charlotte STEM Academy. I'm Mrs. Duncan, the Assistant Principal here at SCSA. When you come to visit SCSA, we ask that you push the button to the right of the door, and our front office staff will alert us that you are here. Once you've been buzzed in, you will walk over to our front. Hi, Ms. Joyce. And then you will receive a visitor badge. Once you have your visitor badge, you're free to go into your child's classroom. But today, I would like to introduce you to Ms. Barnes. Come on back. Hello, and welcome to Southwest Charlotte STEM Academy, home of the rocket. My name is Shakira Barnes, and I'm the proud founding principal of this amazing school. So glad you could join us. Today, we're going to do a tour of this building, but before we do so, I want to let you know a little bit about our school. Our school is nestled in the Steel Creek area, which is one of the fastest growing areas of Charlotte, North Carolina. We are very close to Charlotte Douglas Airport, which makes it extremely convenient for many of our families that tend to travel a bit with their jobs. Not only are we located in the Steel Creek area, but we also have enrolled students from the Palisades and River Gates areas as well. We are so proud of the work we've done as a first year charter school. Let me talk to you about the instructional model. In reading and math at our school, we are engaged in the workshop model. To detail that more, the workshop model components have four models that we use daily. That's the opening, the middle, the mini lesson, the work time and the debriefing. So if you're to walk around any classroom, any grade level throughout the day, you're gonna see a healthy balance of direct instruction with whole group as well, some mini lessons and stations, what we like to call station learning. Very non-traditional in terms of what you're probably used to in your education. So you'll see teachers working with small groups of students, teachers working alongside one student, and then you'll even see students supporting each other in the learning process. Again, this is for reading and math. For our science curriculum, we've adopted STEM scopes as well as mystery science. Using both of those um, programs, we're able to capture so much, much for our kindergarten through seventh grade students in addition to their STEM lab in which they attend throughout the week. As we emerge more in year two, which I like to call year 2.0, you'll see more of a focus around project-based learning in our STEM labs as we cultivate to become one of the best STEM schools in this state and in this country. So watch us grow in year two. We also offer more individualized learning for our students, and we can support that through our smaller class sizes. Our students really enjoy the more personalized time that they have with their teachers, more one-on-one -on -one that is data-driven so that they can track progress and learn and grow as individuals, but also be able to align with these standards and making sure they're reaching milestones throughout the year. Before and after school care is provided for our school, which supports parents that are working and may need that additional time and support. So we open up our doors as early as six o'clock in the morning for our before school program. And we close as late as six o'clock in the evening with our after school. And this is a contracted service that we've been fortunate to have in the first year and moving into year two. Another thing that supports our families is our transportation. We have three buses um, that we are able to use to run throughout the area within, within about a six to seven mile radius of our school. So if transportation is a worry for you, we've got you covered as well. In a little bit, you're gonna see our beautiful brand new building, but before we do so, let me tell you about this amazing staff at Southwest Charlotte STEM Academy. We have quite a few experienced teachers who have done remarkable things previously and have made the foundation very strong at Southwest Charlotte STEM Academy. Our teachers are well invested into the families of this school, many of them living right here in the general area. And with that experience come more of a hands-on approach learning. And so we have such a positive 
school culture that makes our students happy about coming to school to learn and to grow, make friends, um, and just make memories at our school. We cannot wait to show you some of the things that we're doing in our building. And so we're gonna start right now by taking you to our STEM lab with Ms. Jazzy Good, who is also our Teacher of the Year. As principal, there are many things I love about this school, especially my daily visits in classrooms. One of the visits that we're gonna to do today is our STEM lab. When you go into the STEM lab, students really come alive because this is where we showcase many of our STEM projects, our STEM history, what we like to do in STEM, but more importantly, how does STEM relate to everyday life? So, join me. The teacher is Ms. Jazzy Good. Not only is Ms. Good a phenomenal STEM teacher, she's also our Teacher of the Year. So I can't wait for you to hear from her firsthand what we like to do here at Southwest Charlotte STEM Academy in our famous STEM lab. Hi, Ms. Good. Hey, Ms. Barnes, how are you? I'm well, how are you today? Doing well. Hi everybody, my name is Jazzy Good. I'm the STEM coordinator here at Southwest Charlotte STEM Academy. Here at Southwest Charlotte STEM Academy, we value project-based learning and STEM education. So, with that being said, our students will receive STEM scopes and mystery science in their regular education classes, but here in the STEM lab, we have split our classes into lower grades and upper grades. So we have a STEM coordinator for K through three, and then I am the STEM coordinator for fourth through seventh grade. Um, with our STEM um, in fourth through seventh grade, our focus is computer science. We have a program called Project Lead the Way, better known as PLTW, and in the lab our students will then learn to program micro bits through a technology called Make Code through Microbit. Um, in that technology via Microsoft, they will learn how to program these using basic block code. They will also then learn the different input and output devices as well as the engineering design process so that they can complete their final project. That's in sixth grade. Once they get to seventh grade, they will then go on to robotics, and we are looking forward to see what project Lead the Way course we will adopt next for our eighth graders as we grow. So with our lower grade STEM, they're learning the basics, the basics of the engineering design process, the basics of the scientific method. In those courses with Ms. Stokes, they will be learning how to um, guide their way through the engineering design process. They'll also learn that mistakes are okay. Um, they'll be learning, of course, a growth will be taught a growth mindset and what that means um, as far as what it means to be an engineer or a scientist later on in life. They'll be learning all the different jobs that they can obtain through STEM careers. Um, so all of these things are possible in our STEM lab with our K-3 students. Now we're going to go to Ms. Howerton's classroom. Ms. Howerton is one of our great second grade teachers here at SCSA. The way my lessons start is a whole group. So I will explain to them or do a read aloud or do a math lesson whole group. And then we're working together. Some of them will have manipulatives and some will not. Um, and then some will need to use those manipulatives all the time and some will not need them at all. So I try to do what they need and I also pace my classroom with the needs of the students. In second grade we have to have their foundation in math, their, their addition and subtraction solid, like they, they can't hesitate on how to add or subtract larger numbers and that's what they're going to hit in the upper grades, they're just, their numbers are just now going to get larger, it's not, but they don't do like specific addition and subtraction. Um, we hit, you know, fractions and geometry, we, and, and the biggest thing in second grade with math is learning to be able to unpack a word problem because when they get to third grade that's what they're going to be faced with mostly. Um, in reading, um, we do still teach reading, but really they're starting to read to learn, not learn to read, if that makes sense. Um, and that's another foundational skill. If, if the students are having difficulty with reading, this is, this is the year that we have to catch it and, 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 and fill that gap in. Um, because as the years go on now, they're going to read to learn, not learn to read if that makes sense. So that's, that's why second grade, in my opinion, is an extremely important year in their lives because their foundation in every subject, but mostly because math and reading are incorporated, incorporated in every subject after this, um, they have to have those solid foundations. Um, we've done a little bit of coding in second grade as well as in the STEM lab. Um, we work with IXL 
which has math, social studies, science, and reading, which we can differenti differentiate what the students see. Um, we use Prodigy, which they absolutely love because when you work on Prodigy, you can actually go in and work and battle with math problems and things with each other in the classroom, and they absolutely love that because that gets that competitiveness in them. So they want that skill to be strong so that they can move up the levels so that they can be competitive with their classmates. And then we also, which uh, we also can use Freckle a lot. Um, and then I, it's not necessarily a computer-based program, but you know, um, story storybook online. They love that because um, you, they see different characters from you know different uh, TV shows that they might know, and then that character or that person is actually reading them a book. And now we're going to meet our wonderful fourth-grade teacher, Miss Riley. Hey, Miss Riley. I teach all core subjects, reading, writing, math, science, and social studies, while also incorporating STEM into our lessons. We focus on multiplication, division, long division, um, and our core subject would be fractions, where we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, changing a fraction from an improper fraction to a mixed number, and then back to an improper fraction. Um, and then if I feel as though you have grasped that concept, I may enhance it and may push you into dividing fractions. And if you are struggling with that, or if it's more of a challenge for you, then I will have you in a small group session, which we noted as a workshop model. I will pull you back with me and we will focus on the skills of which you need, more personalization. So for an example, when we read Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, there's a little boy named Peter in the story and Peter has a turtle. So a way of which we incorporate STEM is we take some STEM materials and the kids had to come up with a shelter for the turtle. So fourth grade, at this point, you are reading to learn as opposed to learning to read. So we always start the year off with growth mindset pieces, making sure that each child understands that everybody is unique and different. We don't always come with the same skills or tool sets, but it's okay. We can always get there as long as we have a growth mindset, being able to attack challenges and being accepted to the fact that we all make mistakes. With reading, we start doing a lot of chapter series. So some of my favorite are Save Me a Seat and Friendle. And then we also have a lot of games and resources for them to use to make reading more fun. Because a lot of times kids don't care for reading because it's not as enjoyable. You have to be able to give the kids a choice in what they read, making sure that the books are of interest to them and being able to make reading fun. They do a lot of book studies as well. So being able to collaborate with one another and discuss the actual books and the different components of the books. And even with that, sometimes that's when the STEM piece will be incorporated or we may include technology where they all will work on a project, for instance, building a Google Slides to summarize the book and they will all be able to piece together that summary and then show it off to the class. Besides the academic learning piece, you also have to have some physical education, which includes your collaboration piece and your social skills. So now I'm going to take you to the gym.